This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Circle K Food Reset and behind me here you see a proper SUV. This is Neo ES8. You see, the so-called SUV I've been trying to test nowadays, like, like some people call the Hyundai Ioniq 5 SUV. That's not an SUV. This is a proper SUV. Just, just look how big it is. Okay, okay, let me just... I think I have to go closer so you can... You see how big it is? <laughs> so we're gonna do 1000 km challenge with the ES8. And this one is the European version. It has the CCS charge port here. Okay, which is on the, which is on the right side, which is the wrong side. It should have been on the left side, which is the right side. And uh, for some reason, I charged to 100% during the night. Uh, and in the morning hours, when I came back to the car, it was at 98%. I was like, huh, what the heck? So I'm trying to charge it up now. Uh, but we're supposed to start 9 in the morning, which is in 6 minutes. And we'll do the Sweden route. You guys know it. The country is open. So um, this car is a bit thirsty and it is Chinese. So I actually noticed similarities in software behavior with this Neo uh, versus the x -Peng. So maybe just that, that's just how the Chinese do it. By the way, we don't see charging speed directly, but we see this one. So you can do some quick math and this is around uh, 8.5 kilowatt, I think. So, well, actually no, 9.5, yeah, 9.5 kilowatt. So let's get ready and then off we go. Uh, it's four minutes past uh, nine now and we still haven't left. I've decided to stay for 100 percent. We are almost done anyway. So uh we can just deduct. So yeah, we will probably start 10 minutes past nine. We are now on the move and this is a comfy car. You can change some settings also how the, the different modes here. But we're gonna leave it in comfort mode. Initially I had it in eco mode, but eco mode was simply oh, oh this bit. Eco mode was simply too uh, sluggish. So comfort mode seems to be the, okay, it disappears so quickly. But anyway, uh, one weird feature with this car is that uh, there is no trip meter that, that we are usually, what we are used to. But at least we have the trip since reset and then since start. I think since start resets when you uh, recharge, we'll find out. But Anyway, uh, you see now we have, we have driven almost 80 kilometers, okay? There is no watt hour per kilometer uh, dis uh, displayed here. Uh, what you can do is this one here, trip consumption, starts counting as you start driving. So you can take the, the kilowatt hour you spend, divide it by this one, and you will get watt hour per kilometer. I think right now it should be around 300 watt hour per kilometer. And we haven't really gone that fast yet. You can also calculate the average speed based on the trip meter stats here. So um, interesting and another thing by the way is that you see that I have set the temperature to be quite high. Uh, this is something I noticed with other Chinese cars is that um, they, they are slightly different tune. If I set it to 21 degrees Celsius in there I'll be freezing. But 25 degrees in this car is about the same as 21 degrees in the, in the western cars. So just that, <laughs> yeah, in case you want to maybe explain the high consumption that I, I have it hot here. No, I don't. So other than that, um, I will come back. Oh, yeah. And also when you uh, when you change lane. Oh, you're down over it. Well, okay. We have Nomi Pilot active right now. So if you do something like this. Nomi Pilot will uh, temporarily disengage. and then uh, re-enable. Yeah. We are now at Svinesund. This is the usually a checkpoint. I know that uh, from Oslo to here, roughly around the bridge, it's supposed to be 114 kilometers. And look here, it's actually 112 kilometers. So we have to, uh, we have to calculate. This car is actually under reporting distance. So we, we will actually not go to 999. We will, uh, we will finish before that one. Hey, Nomi. What can I do for you? Navigate to Ionity. That's something I can do. Hey, Nomi. Hi there. Navigate to Ionity Specky Road. Can I tag along? Where are we going? 
Oh, you need this back here. I can't do that. Hi, Nomi. Yes. Navigate to Ionity. You can say number one or number two to choose an option. Four. What option would you like to choose? Four. Four. I will update my knowledge base. Nine, 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 nine. We are now at the Ionity Charger in Speculate, 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 Speculate. <laughs> Someone's ears are bleeding. But anyway, okay. So here we are. Luckily, we've got a spot nowadays. Uh, Ionity Charger is getting busy. You see, we have more Skoda, Enya. Well, this is Norwegian, but more and more ID4s and Skodas, and they, they tend to take up the spots. But um, this car has the newer software which is supposed to peak at 120 kilowatts uh, in china they are maxed at 90 kilowatt only think about this 100 kilowatt hour pack but only max 90 and the reason for it is that the the neo chargers this neo supercharger whatever they call it they are 180 kilowatt and then they're split in two so that's why they only go for 90 but in china if you're serious about traveling fast you go for battery swap but at least over here you see now we're getting 106 kilowatt we seem to be limited to 300 amp so the speed here will go slowly go up as the voltage uh, goes up until around 35 percent but okay anyway i'm going to show you inside now i did some calculation uh several stuff several things i need to know um when we arrived here uh i did the calculation about the distance error you don't see it here unfortunately wait can we switch no no I see when we are charging you cannot switch this to see anything else so the trip disappeared it's supposed to be here when you're driving now you see number of amps and volts and this car does not show your charging speed in kilowatt but you can calculate it based on these numbers here and then you have the range and this is the i think this is the gum range because there are two different ranges here you can see if you go battery you will see percentage in the battery here and then range is supposed to be uh, well, actually, you don't see it here. There, there's the VLTP range. <laughs> but there's also a GOM range, which is roughly a half of that because the consumption is high. Yeah, I also calculated. Uh, 83, based on this one, we came here with 7%. And that means a 90 kilowatt hour net capacity based on my uh, estimation now. Uh, and also the consumption was 331 watt hour per kilometer. So, all right, next stop will be, uh, let me show you here. Um, Varberg, it's 107 kilometers away and we are here now and we have to pass through Gothenburg and Varberg. Where is it? There, there. The map, by the way, is a bit dark and I tried to switch it to a different theme but I just can't, couldn't find it. And there's, the sound you keep hearing here is Nomi moving around. Personally, I would prefer Nomi to not move. Uh, I mean, we, we hear it more clearly, the motor, uh, when Nomi is turning the head. Um, hey Nomi. Nomi is here. You hear the whole turning thing? Uh, when I'm um, when I'm stationary, I can hear the motor more. But Sorry, I couldn't find any results. Yeah, but when I'm driving, I can't hear the motor on the thing. But Nomi should be stationary while we are stationary. Wait a minute. Ten minutes of charging, and suddenly we drop to sixty-two kilowatt. Oh, shit, shit, there could be something wrong with this charger. Wait, now it goes up again. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe we should, we should change charger because this charger has been kaput. Okay, I was here, but that charger has been kaput or semi, I don't know. I changed charger expecting to get 110 kilowatt, but actually not. Uh-oh. We are now at uh, Wildbike Ionity, 
charting up, there's a Norwegian Taycan here. Now we don't care about that one. We're gonna see this one. So, you see, this is good. We're getting 109, uh, 105 kilowatts. We came here with 10%. The car is thirsty though. It consumes around uh, 300, uh, 310 watt hour per kilometer, roughly. But it's a big car and it doesn't seem to be the most aerodynamic one. So now I want to eat. I'm not sure if I want to go to Circle K over there or if I have time to even take a lunch here. Ooh, they have something here. Uh, schnitzel and stuff. Okay, I'll figure out. What? I went to the gas station and um, when I'm back, we're down to 90 kilowatts. So I think this is it. Uh, we will get, seems like we get 100 kilowatt only for about 10 minutes. Because uh, yesterday when I tried, I started from 18% and then I got uh, nine, uh, 110 kilowatt until around 35%. So, all right, but let me show you how spacious this car is. Okay, if you look, uh, let's, let's start in the back, for example. Uh, let me see, there's supposed to be a kick sensor. I don't remember how, yeah, no, 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 I, I hit the hit, kick sensor, nice. So it's a seven seater, this one, and I folded down the seats and you see, I connected the Alsacrit cooler box here in the 12 volt outlet. There's plenty of space here. And in the back, we have also a shit ton of space. We also have panorama roof. I just opened it now. I have the cooler box here. I have some tripod and stuff here. And you see the seat that this is the driving position. The seat is so, I have so much space here. <laughs> so. And here in the front, you see we have space under here, so I can put, I put some charger equipment, uh, camera charging equipment also, even the, the shelf, you see this is the shelf from the Model 3, it also fits there, plenty of space, and I went for double sausage today, oh yeah, try it. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, we are 62%. I calculate I need 58% to get to Val. I don't know, what's it called? To get to Helsingborg. And the next stop is Helsingborg. Huh? What? Why do I get this weird. What? You see, it says. Oh, no, no, route 2. Oh, yeah, I look at this. This one is Not that one. Yeah. 149 kilometers. Yeah, I keep looking at the wrong route, that's why. Uh, yeah, you see. So, uh, see now, what we can do is... Hey, Nomi. What can I do for you? Start massage. Done. No, not stop massage. <laughs> oh, it brings this one up. Oh, it disappeared. Hey, Nomi. Hi there. Start massage. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the massage here is actually... Oh, no, no, wait. Okay, okay, let's just go here. It, it disappears too fast. If you go... Climate control, well, so put it in auto. No, auto. Okay, seat. You see, you can choose between mile, tap, or roll. Huh? And actually, I can feel like the massage. Let me, let me just go to the tap massage. It feels like there are some balls, several balls poking me. Whereas the massage I've experienced, the, the, the Western cars, like, like the ID4, is just some kind of air cushion that inflates and deflates. You can hear the whole you know? This one seems to have a, a more significant massage. But I just finished eating, so maybe I shouldn't have the massage on right now. We are now on the move. So south of Weibach, we have 120 zone. And uh, unfortunately, for the ES8 at least, um, you cannot cruise at uh, cruise control higher than 130. See, I'm just gonna show you. Yeah, you can't go higher. You can go lower, but you cannot go higher. So it has been locked, software locked to 130. You can go faster if you just uh, floor it like this. You can go, you can go above it. 
So, uh, and then the speed though is five kilometers per hour off. So the real speed right now is 125 kilometers per hour. Well, well, well. Okay, let's just cruise 125 then. <laughs> okay, we've been driving for 40 kilometers. And uh, I noticed that, uh, yeah, based on the consumption numbers, I mean, the consumption right now is 390 watt hour per kilometer. <laughs> but this, this surface here is the concrete surface. And usually it's loud and uncomfortable, but the air suspension here just floats over this road like like butter. It's just so silky smooth, super smooth over here. Wow, that is impressive. And I have the car in comfort. now at Helsingborg charging up we've been here a little while but anyway so last leg now we consume 53 kilowatt hour and then based on 149 kilometer distance it means that the consumption on this leg was 355 watt hour per kilometer <laughs> but anyway we've been charging for a bit we are already at 36 percent but I'm gonna show you uh, what is relevant is that you guys probably want to see here um, we have well, Max Continental Max Contact MC6 German technology in a Chinese car and the dimension 265, 45, 21 inch. What is it staggered? Let me check back. 265, 45, 21. Okay, but we have 21 inch wheels and I still have really good comfort. Ha! Huh, amazing. So here you see the location and the car. It's quite busy today. I was lucky to have no wait state. So we have uh, XC40 charging here. That's the, you see, you see how small the XC40 looks like next to the ES8. And then we have uh, uh, EQC and IPS charging. So we only have four stalls here, but of course there's possibility to expand to more stalls, but this time no wait state. All right, we've been here 35 minutes. Oh, we're still getting 88 kilowatt. You see, the car, at least it has a nice and flat charging curve, even though it's not that fast. So I estimated that I should have enough now to go back to Weibag. So let's go. We're now at Weilberg. Um, unfortunately, all the chargers at Ionity are occupied. You can see, I'm gonna to try to ninja it from here. Zuck, you see them, they are occupied, all of them. But fortunately, we have Eon chargers here <laughs> and all of them are available. And also when I plugged in now, just a little while ago, I was getting 122 kilowatt. This is the first time I've seen it. So this car can in fact take 120 kilowatts I don't know why we got it so late in the game here. Maybe the, the battery needed uh, the whole half the day to heat up properly. <laughs> no, I don't know. But um, uh, the problem is that today is the end of uh, uh, holiday for many people. So I saw lots of Norwegians traveling. And um, that's probably why we have Ladestau now. So what I'm actually going to do is skip speculate, 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 speculate. And then I'm going for... Strömstad. I'm not sure <laughs> how much cues we'll get over there because the Ionity in Strömstad has six available chargers. Can we see it by the way? No. Six chargers but four of them are kaput. So only two in use but we'll be there in two three hours maybe. Wait. In maybe two and a half hours. So hopefully by that time it will be semi-late so that uh, we can get a spot. 
And okay, so right now, if you look here, I think we're getting around 90 kilowatts, so it's still not that bad. We just have to sit and camp a little bit uh, until we have enough. So, yeah, all right. So far, so good. Uh, let me go outside here. It's, um, it's not nice and warm over here, unlike at um, uh, Helsingborg, but yeah, it's gonna be cold also to, tonight, I think, but we have tailwind now. So that's good because we've been fighting the headwind all the way here, but now we get finally get tailwind. passing by Tarnum and uh, I'm gonna show you some cool features so here you see on this side you have a power meter that goes up and then once it regions regions it turns uh, green so that's cool okay, let me enable cruise control again and also on the other side here you can switch see now we see uh, you see RPM and kilowatt and volts and amp. This is the available power, but uh, I tested you can't get 500 kilowatt even in sport mode. It outputs around uh, 330 something kilowatt at least when I launched it. And then here we see the music, here we see uh, consumption and stuff and estimated range left. This is this is GOM range, this is VLTP range. And then the last one here, now we get back to this one, yeah. And also a cool feature is that you can say, Hey Nomi. What can I do for you? What is my battery percentage? 16% battery remaining. We can go 76 kilometers. <laughs> we are now at uh, what I thought would be the, the last charging stop, uh, Strömstad. Unfortunately, we had the same problem we had before. You see, we have six chargers four of them are broken and then one is in use i wonder if that's the e-tron guy earlier he just caught up with me and they ninja me but the other guys they're trying to make it work now uh, you can see that it's green it's not charging yet the other one is blue but i don't want to sit and wait for them and i so what i'm going to do is i will do a quick top up here uh, i already calculated we're going to go to uh, svinesunds parken that would be the last charging stop, but we need to top up at 50 kilowatt. This, it used to be B charger, it's now Mir, and my, my Mir slash Grim Contact RFID works here. So I calculated I need 15%, or even 12% would be enough, but I'm just gonna go quickly to the restroom, and then we have to top, top up one more time. Oh, this is, I guess, the, the, the clumsiness of non-Teslas. Okay, lucky. Uh, the e-tron left. I wonder if it's the e-tron that we saw earlier, but uh, he must have hammered it got crazy. I don't know, but anyway, so now I'm charging here and we have two cars waiting in queue. Um, but I'm staying here just long enough to, to go home. So, see, there, there, there are other guys also, of course. You see, I'm getting 109 kilowatts. So I calculated that I need 50% uh, or whatever. Let me check again here. Let me check my numbers here. Uh, ooh, I need 55%. Yeah, so the 15 more minutes maybe, we'll see. Uh, last starting stop, okay, okay, so you know, you know, okay, so I have decided that we are going to, I have now 19 minutes of deduction time because of some uh, road construction. And we will make this minus 25 minutes, okay? Because I, I wasted nine minutes over there, but we were also charging. But I think that's roughly fair because it's not normal that so many chargers are broken. You see, those two are broken. 
those two are broken, normally we would have at least five, maybe four or five of them operational, not only two. So yeah, I think that's it. So let's, now let's wait for around 55% before we leave. All right, we've been here 25 minutes. We have 56%. We are good to go. Still getting 91%, 91 kilowatt, but that's fine. We have an e-tron and an ID4 who is waiting for us. So let's get the heck out of here. We just need enough to get home with 5%. We are now back in Norway and the beautiful part is that there was no border control. They opened the borders, no wait state over there. But okay, by the way, I don't know if you noticed it, but we have head up display. I forgot to mention it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, if you look at the time now, um, it's 20. Okay, so we started 10 minutes past uh, nine, whatever, and then we had uh, some deduction. So what we have to do is just, we, we deduct 25 minutes as if we started at 9 and that means right now we are at the 10 hour and 40 minute mark and we still have to drive some distance we are only at 897 ish but remember that we are going to 980 kilometers only because the the speedometer here under reports by two percent so that's it the race is on back to Oslo Oof, I hope we have enough juice hey Numi what can I do for you? Can we make it back home? Got it. Decreasing the rear temperature to 22.5 degrees now. What? <laughs> this is it. Final countdown. 979, 979-1, 979-2, 979-3, 979-4, 9795 9796 9797 9798 9980 and we are right by uh, Tusen Fru, that's always okay 2051 2051 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Eleven twenty-five, and then okay. Consumption three, three, four, four, thirty-four point four. Yeah, thirty-four point four. Well, we're back at Soccer K, and uh, you know, we when I started charging now, we got 120, 122 kilowatts. Is that the coincidence that every time we charge at ABB charges, we get one hundred twenty kilowatts, but? When we are at the tritium charges, uh, Ionity, we only get around 110 kilowatt. I'm not sure. This is, yeah, I, I don't know, man. But anyway, but uh, okay. And then it lasted not too long, and then it dropped to 110 kilowatt. But okay, so um, the time was 11 hours and 25 minutes. And if you look at the list here, ah, uh, okay. Well, some of these cars they were done in winter, so it's not too fair, but. Um, just remember that there are really no other car that is as big as the ESA. Just bear that in mind. When you look at the other cars here, like EQC or uh, yeah, even the ID4, those cars are smaller. It's, I'm really trying to find another car that can have so much space as this one. And I simply can't. Maybe the Model X is the closest one. Yeah, uh, even Model X is even bigger than Fat Etron. So Fat Etron is big, like dimension-wise, but it doesn't utilize the space as much as other modern EVs built from ground up. So, but I feel like there is some potential to be even faster if you can just charge faster. Okay, we have to give up when it comes to consumption. This thing is thirsty as, yeah, I don't know, it's even thirstier than Fat Etron. So, congratulations, we set a record in the thirstiest car ever not counting vans <laughs> but at least if we can charge a little bit more aggressive in the bottom below 50 percent or below 60 70 percent then we should be able to improve the charging time I mean, the whole total time by maybe 10 15 minutes but i'd say that it's still decent and you see that it has a nice and flat charging curve so uh, you can still charge like i did uh, second the last time or whatever it was i charged to uh, 80 percent and it was still fine so but you know, overall, this car, what do I think about this after driving for a whole day? The comfort is superb, even with 21-inch wheels. 
Uh, noise level is very good. I still don't know exactly how good it is. Seems like this one, the, the glass roof kind of lets out some of the noise or lets through some of the noise in tunnels. Uh, but at least for normal roads, superb. It was like driving a German car, but I still feel like it wasn't as silent as the German cars. But okay, we'll figure out once I start measuring it. Seats were great. They, they feel a bit firm. So uh, not my perfect taste, but still though very good seats with ventilation proper massage cooling i mean uh, cooling heating i mean and overall super comfy spacious and powerful also i, I wonder if this car can actually match e-tron uh, 60. we have to find out when we do the acceleration test uh, but it's quick yes <laughs> but the software is the weakest part of this car they could have made this car better if they tweaked the software, removed some of the silly limitations like... Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, some of this has to do with the radar, by the way, the, the 30, 130 kilometers per hour uh, cruising speed thing. Uh, something to do with the range of the radar or cameras. But at least if they can do some other tweaks with the software, I think this car could be really good. But already now, I feel like it's already a damn good car for the money. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.